Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Dorothy. I am a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. There you can contact me if you would like your own private sessions. And I'm teaching classes online. You can connect with me there as well. And Facebook, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. So today what I want to do here is, and this is a new format for me. I've been watching and I've been trying to figure out if I want to do the whole year for each zodiac sign or if I wanted to continue doing once a month for each zodiac sign. Now that is a huge amount of hours. I can't do it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a three month forecast for each zodiac sign. So January, February, March or basically the winter months, the winter season and I will work on that for you. And if you want to see the first part of the winter, you go back and you watch the December forecast for your zodiac sign. Okay, so this will, intro will be in every video, just so you know. Watch the time. If you want to go watch another one, you can skip past this point. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching, and let me get started. Yeah. All right, Pisces, let's get started. This is the full moon on January 4th. It's in your fifth house. All right, it's in the sign of Cancer. And that means the fifth house is all about where you're creative, that creative self-expression, what you're passionate about, uh, it's a love affair. Sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's the leisurely hobbies, games, sports, all these things. Children are also part of this area. So any of these things can be activated by this full moon in Cancer. And when we have a full moon in Cancer, that's an emotional moon. It's in her own sign. And when it's full, it just heightens our... Our, um, heightens our emotions and we become more sensitive and aware of the situations that I just mentioned because that's the house it's in for you. We also have four planets in the sign of Capricorn at the same time it's in the opposite end of your chart which is in your 11th house and that is when you fo where you focus on your friends the groups you belong to and you know social endeavors organizations activities things like that and so with over the first few weeks of uh, the ending of December and the beginning of January with all that Capricorn energy in that part of your chart you might have decided what will work and what won't work as far as organizations and groups that you belong to you might have just gotten rid of some of them that don't feel like they're useful for you and just moved on to the ones that you feel more serious about um, if not even uh, a day later, on January 5th, we have Mercury and Venus entering Aquarius. And when it enters Aquarius, it moves into your 12th house. Venus in the 12th house in Aquarius is all about the values that we have. All right. That's Aquarius. The unique values. That's Venus in Aquarius. All right. In the 12th house is our hidden strengths and weaknesses. It's institutions and... Um, you know, our dream time, spaces like that. And Mars, uh, Mercury moves in there as well on uh, the same time, day, the same day, so January 5th. So with Venus and Mercury, both in your 12th house, you know, you're going to have a focus in on what your hidden strengths and weaknesses are. So it, whatever comes up, it's a really good idea to work with it and don't continue to stuff it because it's hidden area for us, for ourselves. It means where it's like our closet. We close the door and we don't look at it. Let's not do that. This is an opportunity to work through it. All right, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but there's still more about that, so hold on. January 20th, the new moon at zero degrees of Aquarius. All right, there's a lot of activity in your 12th house this month for you, Pisces. So you're going to be working on things that are maybe you don't want to look at. You're a Pisces, your ruler is the 12th house, you rule the 12th house, but sometimes things have to come to our attention instead of just letting things pass by. So on the 20th, the new moon at zero Aquarius in the 12th house means these hidden things will come up again. Things that you've hidden from yourself will come up and show up. And they show up through other people or just through circumstances and situations around us. So we're able to see something about ourselves that we typically don't want to see or don't see. On the 21st, Mercury does go retrograde in that area, and it will be retrograde in that area until February 11th. So on the 21st of January and the 11th of February, Mercury is stationary. So the few days on either side of that are difficult because Mercury is stationary, so that means communication and movement is pretty much at a standstill. 
You know, that doesn't mean we can't do anything. It just means don't push anything. And I know when we have a new moon right before this, on January 20th, the thing is, it's just, that's when we set our goals, new goals, new intentions. New Moon in Aquarius is all about, you know, discovering, you know, in, in setting ourselves up to have new adventures and just what can we do that's different and unique and independent and um, just not, not inside the box. What can we do for ourselves? But when it's in that 12th house, it's going to bring up stuff that you don't want to see. And that's just the way it is for you this time around. It happens to everybody once a year. It's just your turn, Pisces. So what I'm basically saying is when you set new moon intentions, just do it with, uh, with ease and grace for yourself. Be kind to yourself with compassion and love and bring that energy into whatever stresses that the station of Mercury might bring about too. It's not that difficult though. It's just a little bit difficult. And Pisces, you might just shrug it off anyway, so it might not be difficult at all, <laughs> okay? Because that's how you are. You guys are so re relaxed and carefree most of the time. Uh, indecisive, but, you know, so what? In some things, not everything. So during that retrograde period of Mercury, I'm going to tell this because I told every other zodiac sign the same thing. Go into it with a list of things to do that you have not finished yet. Don't go into this period trying to start new things. Go into this period of Mercury retrograde with the thought that I'm going to finish old projects. Okay? So I want you to do that. Moving on to February. Now on February 3rd, the full moon in Leo is going to be in the opposite area of your astrology chart, which is your sixth house. So when there's a full moon in Leo, that is drama. Leo is always dramatic. It's fire. It's a fire sign. When, it's in the, when the moon is in that sign, she can be overly dramatic. So the slightest thing causes major attention, <laughs> major, major issues. Um, this can be good or bad. If you're looking for attention at work, it's in your sixth house, then you'll get it. If you need to, if you need to figure out something in regards to your health in your daily living, then you'll have that energy available to you as well, thanks to the new moon, uh, the full moon. Sorry, the full moon. On February 6th and 7th, very nice little aspect I'm going to talk about. It's really simple. doesn't usually do much, but it's really nice to know that this is in the middle of everything else. It's Venus sextile Pluto. And when Venus makes a sextile to Pluto, that means our love relationships feel comfortable, harmonious. If there's a, if there's a, a, a transition that needs to happen, you know, we want it, we're ready to take this relationship to the next step. We can easily do that. It's near Valentine's Day. Some people love to do that at Valentine's Day. So we could take it to another, you know, take another step, take it to another level if we like, if we wish. If we're in a relationship that's not working out for us at this point in time, then we could easily transition out of that relationship, easily. No bad feelings, no harm, no harm, no foul, no bad karma. Learn your lesson and just say, yeah, you know what, when this isn't working, let's, let's move on. And just go on as friends and just and just move on. So there's two ways we can use that Venus sextile Pluto. And that goes on right around February 6th and 7th. Take advantage of that. And we have some more Mars. We have some more relationship stuff coming up in a minute. On February 11th, Mercury, again, I also mentioned it will be moving, uh, it will be stationary to move direct at that point. And so that's a day when um, things will seem a little difficult to move. So maybe it will be bad weather in the northeast. That's where I'm at. Or wherever you are, because sometimes that's travel too, that Mercury, when it's stationed, travel is very difficult, communication is very difficult. Just don't force anything on in those few days, okay? The new moon on February 18th is at 29 degrees of Aquarius. That's also your 12th house, so see, that's the focus. The new moon in, um, the first new moon on uh, January 20th, there we go. <laughs> So that's zero Aquarius, and this new moon on February 18th is at 29 Aquarius. So we have a, a new moon sandwich in Aquarius this month, uh, this in this time period here. And so, hey, it's rare. It's like a blue moon. It's an astrological blue moon is what it looks like, what it comes down to. And that's kind of cool. So that just means you're beginning things and you're ending things. So... Even though it's a new moon at the final degree of a zodiac sign, there's really no setting up uh, new goals, new intentions. We have to wait for the moon to move into the into the next zodiac sign. So what we need to do, and I'll mention this at the um, the uh, March event as well, the March new moon, which is a solar eclipse and a super moon. We basically there's not a lot we can do for a few hours until the moon moves into the next zodiac sign. 
And so with that being said, we just need to allow things to just be what they are, um, let things go for the first few hours and release and let go. And then we can do our new moon rituals or our new moon uh, goal setting, whatever it is that you like to do for your new moon. It's not going to work out for the 29th degree of Aquarius. It's just not because that's all about releasing that final degree. Um, on the 18th, later in the day, the sun, it's actually in the evening, the same day as the new moon, the sun does move into the sign of Pisces, and so that's, you know, your sign. Now it will be your birthday month. Happy birthday, Pisces. And that means it's just time to be flexible and just be you, be what you are, be who you are. With all that focus on your 12th house and those hidden things in Aquarius, which is a very fixed, it's a fixed air sign that could be a very difficult month for you. But... If you're able to dig in and look at what it is that you need to release and let go of and just really create lists. Pisces aren't always famous for that, but create some lists. You've got more than just a Pisces sun. So create lists and do what you can to work with that Aquarius energy. So when the sun does enter your birth sign, you have worked through and released a lot of things that have not been uh, useful to you anymore. All right, that aren't useful to you anymore. When the sun does move into that first house, that's the ego, and you shine, your light shines, and it's time to come out of the dark and back into the light for yourself. And this is what you get to do once it is your birthday month. So that starts February 18th. On the 19th, we have uh, Mars moves out of Pisces into Aries. On February 20th, Venus does the same, follows suit. And then on February 22nd, they meet. All of this is in your second house. Let me double check. Yes, it is in your second house. This is of hopes of, not hopes, this is the second house of values, what you value. It's how you love. So you have Venus, the planet of love and values, in her own house, second house. Mars is there with her. That's the masculine and the feminine. That's coming together of the two genders. And it is, um, it is a sexual relationship. It is um, inspiration. It's motivation to, to, to do what you want, either to love or to create beautiful things, especially in the second house. It's all of that and more. So with all of these activities going on in your second house, this is a very financially dominant month. And it is also and or, because it could be both, a month that you're really focused in on a new relationship, a new love relationship. So, you know, that sounds like fun either way, if you ask me. And who doesn't need that once in a while, right? I think most people do. So, all about communicating what it is that you need in your love relationships, okay? That's what I want you to focus on. On the 23rd of February, the sun in Pisces makes a square to Saturn in Scorpio, in Sag, I mean. This is a little bit of a mixed bag, but not bad. So it's a square energy. It's about a challenge and an obstacle, but not bad because it's mutable energies. They're both mutable signs, immutable signs. So that means whatever comes up for you that may be difficult, this 90 degree angle is just saying, hey, you've got a little bit of a challenge here. Meet it. Learn and grow, and it will go by really quickly and easily. It's not like a fixed square at all. Fixed squares are very difficult to move through. This is a mutable square, so you can move through this easily, and it will really help your relationships and anything else that is going on in your life. On the 23rd, <clears throat> excuse me, on the 24th of February, we also have Venus and Mars. Those two are still together, but they're making a harmonious trying to Saturn, who is just squared by the sun. So this is also fantastic. This will help stabilize and, you know, legitimize a relationship. So if you use that Mars and Venus as a love affair, um, this actually might make you realize that you actually have more feelings for a person than just a sexual love affair, okay? But you can also look at it in the financial sense and the things that you're spending money on by beautifying your home or buying things that you feel that make you feel good and comfortable and beautiful, and you'll be able to stabilize that a little bit too so you won't overspend and be overactive in that. On February 25th, the Sun and Neptune are conjunct in your first house. So a little bit of fog can clear about what it is. The Sun will burn off some of that Neptunian fog. So it will help you to maybe redefine who you are. Redefine just something about the day. It just will help you to you know, stand up for something you believe in or stand up for something that you want. 
Let me move on to March. In March, we have the full moon in Virgo. In your seventh house, personal relationships. Relationships are a theme off and on. They kind of go through cycles, and they are a theme a little bit right now, especially for you. This is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So that Virgo full moon is all about the details and focusing in on, on do you want a relationship with somebody who is, it's um, that you'll see them on a daily basis? Or are you doing that too much and it's just getting to be overwhelming? That's the question with the full moon in Virgo in your seventh house. It could be that you're forming a partnership, a new partnership with somebody at your work. Or you're going into a contract with somebody else. Mercury's done retrograde at this point, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. On March 10th, we have a very, very nice trine between Mars and Jupiter. This is all about what you want, when we're creative, what we're passionate about. Gives us all the fire and the energy that we need to get behind a project. Lots and lots of good energy on that day. On March 11th, Mars and Uranus make a conjunction. Now this one's kind of a bit of a, this one's a spitfire, let me tell you. This one can be dangerous for some people. It's in your second house of your personal resources. So that's a, not a bad place to have it. It's an okay place to have it. That just means there's more focus on what you value and you love relationships. Uranus has been in this area for a long time. There's always been a lot of activity in this area of your chart for a couple of years now. But Mars conjunct Uranus, so moving right to be with the same place that Uranus is, adds extra energy to it. So there could be something will come up that is exciting or overexciting. Just be cautious. Don't go headstrong into anything on this day. It's a day where we just need to be careful and take our time and be very aware of our surroundings, be very present. Mars Uranus can be just, it can be a bit volatile. On the 14th, I'm going to leave you with that one. <laughs> I know. It's just a lot of energy. It has sometimes has a hard time um, moving through us. So if we're not careful, um, you know, we could hit our head. I don't know. You could cut your hand chopping vegetables, slam your foot in the door, things like that. It's just it's stupid stuff, but it might not be stupid stuff. So just be aware and, and just don't be, you know, a bull in a china shop. That's all. On the 14th of March, Saturn is going to station. It's in Sagittarius. It moves up to 4 degrees of Sag at this point. And then it goes stationary, and then it goes retrograde. So for the coming four months, then it will be in your solar ninth house, right? Yes, in Sagittarius. Doesn't mean there's no movement there, but that just means that Saturn and Sag in your fourth, in your ninth house, it's going to move all the way back into the eighth. It's going to move back into Scorpio. But then we'll come back into Sag again a few months later before the end of the year. So when Saturn does station in that area of your chart, you know, that is, you know, it could very well be that you need some higher education. That ninth house is about higher education, expanding my awareness, especially through travel or through education and through exposure to foreign cultures or people that are foreign to you. So with Saturn retrograde in that area, you, you it's a time, it's just time for us to, you know, it's only been in Sag for a few months, so we haven't really had a long time for um, it to build up any steam or for us to really build up any history with Saturn and Sagittarius. So if we just move slowly, then uh, the energy of this moving through the ninth house just will help you to reestablish what your education and your learning is all about. It's pretty simple at this point. Venus enters Taurus on March 17th, and that will be your fourth house of home and family, making that the focus. This is wonderful. It's it's lovely. It's comfortable. You're going to maybe decorate your home. Maybe spring's coming, so maybe it, you're able to um, start decorating outside if you can in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, you guys, it's fall, so you'll start uh, getting ready to clean up and prepare for the next season. <clears throat> So I want to end with this. So it's good to be present for this one. This one is a bit tricky. Um, this last thing I want to talk about. We have a super full moon. Actually, this one's a new moon. We have a super new moon. It's a total eclipse. It is on March 20th. And with new moons and eclipses and a super moon, that means it's closer to the planet than, than other moons. Um, you know, usually we set new goals. 
and it's set in tensions. But this eclipse and new moon is at the 29th degree of Pisces. It's at 5.36 a.m. in the east coast of the United States. That's the last sign of the last degree of the zodiac. That's about a culmination of energy and a completion. And it's like that final exhale. It's releasing. So basically what I want us to do is I want it's a really important day. So at sunrise, we have a new moon. But it's all about that that whole day should be about releasing and letting go and allowing things to move through. Again, east, east, east time, east coast time in the United States. You have to adjust for where you live. Um, so the whole process of this is all about, and this is in your first house. So there's this whole dynamic for you, especially Pisces, for you to, you're redefining who you are, but you're having to redefine it by letting go first. So by the time the uh, sun moves into Aries, I want the sun to move into Aries, and the moon will move in there too, but it'll take um, just over 13 hours for the sun to move into Aries, and that will be at 6.45 p.m. East Coast time, Eastern Standard Time. Then we're able to see Coast time is about releasing, even though this is a new moon, it's about releasing. So when that sun enters the sign of Aries, and that will move into your second house. You'll be able to redefine and set new goals about what you value. So let me read this sentence that I wrote. I'll put it up on the screen too if you can see it. We all have a chance to go over what our lives have been about over the last year. Gather our thoughts and release what needs to be released. So we can soon manifest what's new and what matches who we are now. Because this is the end of this astrological year. Your birthday is the end of, a, of your year. This day here on March 20th is more important as setting new goals than January 1st is. That's just a day. If it's your birthday, then that's a good day. But March 20th is a great day for all of us to set new goals. But this time around, we're, we're really lucky. It's good that we have a new moon on the day that we have the spring equinox. It's fantastic. Same thing happened in December. Actually, it hasn't happened yet when I'm recording this, but it happens <laughs> on the winter solstice as well. It's not typical to have a new moon on the uh, on the season changes. So it's fantastic. So take advantage of this. If you need more information, you know where to find me. Nageastrologer.com. Don't forget, I'm having classes online, so come and join me. And thank you very much. I'm going to be done with this for now. And uh, blessed be. I'm going to say namaste. Namaste.